This year, at this moment, we would like to celebrate a Lifetime Achievement Award. Lifetime Achievement Award is for anyone who served tireless hours and dedicate their life uh, to our service of work, to um, their service within the city of Cedar Hill. This year's Lifetime Achievement Award is for Greg Patton. Well, Greg and I were at East Texas State University together. It was ETS uh, College then. And he was there and I met him in a education class. He needed grade points. And so he went through the catalog and found an audiovisual class in the education department that was a four hour course, which get him an A. And he knew how to operate all the movie projectors and the tape, all that. And he said, that'll be a whiz. So he went over the education department that summer and walked in and sat beside me. And that's where we met. You know, he, al he always had, like when he walked into a room, it was like, you know, people were attracted to him. And mom and I are more like kind of, we're in the we're in the background, you know. We, but he was always, um, you know, won people's hearts over. Judah, I don't remember exactly how we did meet. He did join the fire department, the volunteer fire department, and I really got to know him through that. And I knew his dad-in-law pretty well. He run an insurance office here in Cedar Hill. And I guess through that is where, where I originally met Greg Patton at. <laughs> I know Greg in a lot of ways <laughs> um, because of the time we shared. Um, a lot of it was, of course, we served on council together from 2000, I think it was like 2000 to 2008, something like that, serving together. But um, Greg's been a fixture in this town since before I was even a part of this town. My goodness, way back from, of course, firefighter volunteer, um, helping Joe Poole before Joe Poole was even called Joe Poole, before there was even a hole in the ground, um, all the way through whenever the city needed somebody to step up for something, Greg was the kind of guy that would always jump in. Uh, I've known Greg Patton, who I've known uh, 21 years from uh, his time on the council, from when he first got elected. And uh, we grew to become uh, best of friends. We had uh, great times together and some memorable times together. When uh, Greg got elected in 2000, and I was driving home, and he asked me, did I, uh, had I ever thought about being mayor pro tem? And I said, no, not really. And he said, well, you need to think about it. So I've known Greg Patton for all of my 34 years with the city. Um, so I guess I've known him in many forms. He was a chairman of the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, he was very so he was very much involved with the volunteer fire department. He was our very first storm spotter, uh, ham radio operator, um, a community visionary. He saw what the city could be uh, decades before it had the opportunity to do it, and then played really un, 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 an unlimited amount of roles uh, to be able to make sure that uh, the, the the town achieved it. So he's. Uh, built the pillars on which the, the, the community sits on today. Well, they call him Puddles. That's his nickname. Because Mike Sims named him that because he was the weather watcher for Channel 5. For about 20 years he did that. So he was always the one they call. F At Channel 5 we talked to weather watcher Greg Patton today and so that's what they call him is Puddles. People have known him a long time. Um. I just think he's a natural servant. Um, he understands that, like, you know, for the community to operate, it needs leadership. You know, it needs people that are willing to step out of their comfort zone to try to make things better um, for others. You know, he was 
like I said, that was something he was always real good at. He, you know, just looking back, like when he would go serve on jury duty, you know, we were always trying to get out of jury duty. He'd always come back and go, guess what? I'm the foreman on the jury, you know? So he was always so excited to like, you know, take the baton and, and be the leader in the group. And he would come out here on Saturday morning and I would sleep in and he would come out here and sit in my dad's office and watch all these old guys come in and talk about what was going on because my dad had the office open from 9 to 12 on Saturday. And so he got to meet Turk Kennedy, Brownie Peters, uh, a lot of the, it, Charles Ray, a lot of the older men through my dad. And so in 1969, he said he wanted to go to the insurance business with my father. And I said, ah, you're crazy, that's business just consumes you. I don't want to go back to that small town. I grew up there. I don't want to go back. And he said, well, that's what I want to do. And I said, well, okay, we'll try it. So we moved here. He started in 69 with my dad, and then we moved here in 72. And I remember he said he was going to sell the house, and he sold it within a week or so. And we, next thing we know, we were out here looking for a house. There was only two houses in Cedar Hill that you could buy then, and they were on Randy Road. And so we picked out one of those and bought it. And when we moved that day, he didn't take anything out of the refrigerator. He was so, wanting to get out of here so fast that he didn't clean out the refrigerator. He just loaded it up and brought it out of here. One of my memories of your service to the city was your involvement in the Lake Joe Pool Project. You spent countless hours working with local and national leaders to bring the project to its completion. I remember the day that the dam was dedicated and then after the ceremony, you and I flew in a military helicopter, which was pretty neat for a young girl. Growing up in the summers, we would take road trips in the family suburban all across the country. On one of those trips, we were traveling down through central California on a freeway. And my brother Jay was in the back row playing his large boom box. This was before headphones were the normal, so everyone in the car could hear the song, and he was playing Van Halen's 1984 hit, Hot for Teacher. This song has an epic drum roll in the beginning of it, so let me play that for you real quick. My dad had no idea what that was. He thought that he had blown out a tire on the back right. So we quickly pulled over and when he realized what it was, we were all laughing. Again, we continued on our road trip and not long after that, my dad's Samsonite suitcase that he tied on the top of the Suburban flew off and landed in the median of the freeway. His clothes went everywhere. He turned around, went back to retrieve it all, and I, as a 15-year-old, was so embarrassed. My father's clothes were out there for the whole world to see. Thanks for all you've done for Cedar Hill, and congratulations on your lifetime award. He's a wonderful guy. The main thing that I think about with Greg was when we went to Washington, D.C. I was chairman of the Chamber of Commerce. He was the representative that had lobbied for years for the lake and Mayor Turk Kennedy and Archie Hall. And the four of us went to Washington, D.C. Now, Greg had worked on this project for years, but we went to lobby and we were there for three days. We lobbied, it was so much fun. It was a wonderful time. There was just one problem though, you see, there were four of us, one girl and three boys. Nobody would spend the night with me. Um, I've characterized Greg as the kind of guy that steps up and leans in when others are willing to step back and move away. Um, so he can have a really strong personality, but he's fun. Greg's always optimistic, laughs, always finds something funny in even the most serious of situations. He just, he just a good all around person. And he likes to help people. Uh, I would describe great character as a man of uh, integrity, a good man. He believes in what he believes in. And uh, he has a lot of character. He's, he's, a, he's a 
man that you would like to have as a friend. If he said he got your back, he has your back. Oh, Greg is uh, first and foremost warm uh, and genuine uh, and fun. He is just a fun guy to be around. Um, he loves people and his um, enthusiasm for things are infectious and uh, he attracts people to him. He has a love for many things, uh, travel, the towers, this community, um, and he is um, very inspirational for those around him. He's uh, someone that uh, attracts people to want to do good things. When he was growing up, he was called Mr. Rhythm on the Skins because he was a drummer. He started in the band in, when he was in sixth grade because they needed a snare drummer in the high school band. So he'd drive, he'd ride his bicycle from his middle school to the high school field and they he joined the band, the high school band when he was in sixth grade. And by the time he graduated from high school, he was in a stage band playing the drums and they called him Mr. Rhythm on the Skins. And he was able to go to Henderson County Junior College for two years on a band scholarship. And after he left Henderson County, the East Texas wanted him to play for them and he said he'd had enough. No more band, so. But I never knew him then. So anytime we run into some of his old friends, they always have to tell me how good he was on the drums. Kind of some funny stories about first time running. Greg was used to serving, but he was never used to running for office. So I remember early on, he got his name on the ballot and everything else, but not much was happening. And so Steve Phillips, who a lot of people will remember, um, got a hold of him, almost uh, got a hold of him by the ear and said, no, you're gonna get out and work. You've got to win this. And that figurative kick in the rear motivated Greg and he got out and door knocked and really engaged with people and found out he was having fun doing it because that was kind of his character to be with people. So, Greg jumped in there. But one of our fondest memories was uh, we were sitting in a, uh, we was having breakfast one morning and we saw this other African-American guy sitting at the table and uh, we got to talk to him and say, hey, where are you from? And he told us he was from Alabama. And we're like, well, he said, where are you guys from? And we're like, we're from Cedar Hill, Texas. Y'all from Cedar Hill? He said, yeah. He said, y'all sitting together? <laughs> like, yeah, we sitting together. He said, man, I wouldn't fool with them SOBs from where I'm from. So that kind of made me like, yeah. I said, he said, y'all talk to each other? I said, yeah, we actually like each other. He said, oh, no, man, I wouldn't fool with them SOBs from where I'm from. So we just had a lot of fun times as we uh, went around to uh, different conferences. I remember during my Cedar Hill Chamber of Commerce days, I had no uh, aspiration to serve as an elected official uh, and uh, it was just not in my thought. But through every moment that I came across Greg Batten, he, he always had some sort of a sense of empowerment. Uh, he kind of always gave me clear direction or advice, or sometimes it was just the smile and the wink uh, that he would give to me. Uh, I still cherish that uh, to this day. So I want to wish you well, and I thank you, uh, and congratulations to uh, you receiving the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> He's got nine lives. <laughs> He's like a cat, because, you know, he got hit by a car. Um, gosh, I guess that, was, that had to have been 10 years ago. As he was walking, he, he was hit, and I think he flew 50 yards, and he landed on his head, and he had bleeding on his brain. And I remember, I remember going to the hospital, and the chaplain came in to greet mom and I, because I figured, you know, that was a tough day. But he survived that, and I don't know how he survived it, and he, um, you know, it was a scary time. And um, so he survived that. And then the cancer came. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> he suffered from cancer for four years. Congratulations on your Lifetime Achievement Award. 
You have been an involved citizen of Cedar Hill for over 50 years. You always demonstrated your willingness to listen to all things, whether they be concerns, complaints, or compliments from others. Well, I think everything that we see today and take for granted uh, are things that uh, may not have happened if uh, Greg Patton hadn't been uh, involved. Um, the fact that we've got a vibrant business community, having uh, being involved in one of the oldest uh, businesses in town, uh, put him in a position to lead by doing, but also to lead the Chamber of Commerce when it was getting started. Uh, we can look out off of our, uh, our high points and see Joe Pool Lake that wasn't here and wouldn't be here except for the visionary leaders like Greg that looked out across that valley and saw what could be. Um, the fact that we have such a, an engaged community uh, that does still take care of each other and still cares about its seniors and is still welcoming to newcomers is really part of the Cedar Hill way that Greg had a big hand in uh, helping to create. <laughs> no, he's a good guy. So we're good friends and he visits me regular and I appreciate that so much. And he'll come in and pray for it. I'm sorry, your chair is empty. And, you know, I told you he wanted the chair. And he won't put his name on the bottom of it. We get it. So we, we've been good friends for a long time. So after he joined us, part of Uh, John Patty. Uh, I can't think of more deserving person for it. For how you stood for for all these years. I just want to say, Thank, for, thank you for serving. It's been a pleasure being your friend. And uh, I love you, my friend, and continue uh, gracing and living as you continue to go forward in life. Well, Gregory, um, General, we had a really good time together. Uh, we went through the trenches, through the highest of highs, the lowest of lows, through personal tragedies, through your own tragedies of accidents and illnesses to the greatest of fun and seeing, seeing our dreams and our plans come to fruition. Um, I can't imagine any other people I'd rather have spent those years of my life with than you and, and a few others. So God bless you, my brother. Yeah, Greg, I'm, uh, I'm really grateful to uh, still be around for uh, you to, to witness you receiving this award. I think it's something uh, that you greatly deserve and one that um, is a real privilege just to be able uh, to be able to celebrate with you and your family. Um, I'll tell you, you played a huge role in welcoming uh, Pam and I to town when we were super young and in showing us what it is, um, what it is to really commit to a community and to um, a town and to people, and uh, our lives have been made better by your work and by your efforts and by your example, and uh, thousands of others have as well. And I just want to thank you and and Linda and your whole family for the the many contributions that you've made to making Cedar Hill the place that we all love today. So many years, so many memories. Congratulations, Greg. And uh, once again, congratulations. I just want to congratulate you, Greg. You finally caught up with him and got you one of these. I'm proud of you. I'm glad to have you as a friend. <laughs>